Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I know that exam season is well underway and a lot of you have started your exams, be it university exams, A-levels or GCSEs. There are over 20 different question words that you might see in an exam. For example, assess, explain, describe, explore, identify, define, compare, contrast. These are all words that I'm sure you've seen in exam questions that span across the different subjects. One thing that I notice when I tutor A-level students in particular and GCC students is that there is a misinterpretation of what these words mean and what happens is you see the topic, you see the question and then you just dump any information that you know about that topic onto that question. So there are two categories of question words. One set requires you to critically analyse. So words such as discuss, evaluate or even to what extent those kind of words require you to critically analyse, and I'll talk about what that means in a second. And the other set of words are purely descriptive, so words such as define, outline, explain, they don't require you to go into any depth. So I'm going to leave the timestamps down below for every single word that I explain in a bit more detail. I'll probably explain about eight different terms. The words in each category do overlap quite a bit but the nature of the words can be very distinct. The first word is analyse. When you're asked to analyse, what you're being asked to do is to deconstruct that particular topic or that particular subject into its parts. What you need to do is break the essay down or break the question down into its fundamental parts. So when you're asked to analyse something, you really need to go into depth and find out what the context is, what the background is. When you analyse, you're using debate and evidence. So you might you might use a quote if it's in English, you might use a quote in order to analyse. The next word is evaluate. So again, evaluate can be seen across a range of different subjects. And when you're evaluating something, again, what you're doing is quite similar to analyse, but when you're evaluating, you are looking at all of the evidence. The key with evaluating is that you do need to give your own opinion. So you do need to it's kind of discuss to what extent do you agree or disagree with the statement given? It really, it really asks you to go into depth and find the evidence for and against and then give your standing. Where do you stand? You've evaluated all the evidence, you've presented all the evidence and then where is your positioning in this question? Now moving on to the word assess. So again, assess is another critical word, so it's a word that requires you to give opinions, to kind of debate, essentially. So look at the negatives, look at the positives, look at the advantages and disadvantages and try to give a conclusion based on all of the evidence. Now the key difference with the word assess is that you are giving the opinions of not just your own, which is what kind of evaluate was like, but when you're assessing, you're giving the opinions of all concerned. Or you might be assessing the usefulness of a certain treatment or a certain drug. What you do need to give is opinions from all sides. So you need to give the views from those that maybe designed the medication, those that take the medication, um, those that are against, those that are for, and you're really assessing all possible avenues in order to come to that final judgment. Something that's quite useful with assess questions as well is to talk about the limitations. So when you're assessing, you do, you, you know, you're giving the opinions of everyone, but you do need to think about what the limitations are. And the scientist is obviously going to be biased because they designed the drug or they designed the medication. So naturally, they are going to be in favour of it. So that could be something to think about and that should be something that you are writing in your essays. So this is probably more useful for university students. And the last critical word that I wanted to talk about is to what extent, well it's not really a word but a phrase, is the phrase to what extent. And I've seen this quite a bit, so to what extent does this support this? I feel like this word is quite intuitive. You do need to think about, you kind of need to do all the previous steps. So you need to evaluate, you need to assess, you need to discuss and really think about all of the sides of an argument um, and then give the evidence. Ultimately, you must really think about all sides of the argument with evidence. Again, this is probably a term that you'll see in a question that's um, in English literature or even in geography or history, definitely, uh, and definitely in university exams. You definitely see this word quite a bit, to what extent does. Um, and it really requires you to think about everything you know and to give evidence for everything you know and to support you, the, the information that you have studied um, and to back it up and kind of give an opinion, but not just yours, but an opinion that is supported with. If you are a GCSE or A-level student, the next set of words are probably 
a lot more important and you'll see them a lot more than the first set. So the first word is define. It's just define, which means give the definition. It does not mean to explain. It does not mean to give methods and pathways. It just means to define. What is the definition of this? Just define it. One thing that I really want to emphasize is do not give two definitions that are contrasting or two definitions that contradict each other. And this is something that you see in mark schemes a lot where an examiner, where the examiners will say, if someone's given an answer and the rest of the answer contradicts the initial part, then do not give marks for either bit, even if the first bit's correct. Okay, so this is easily my favorite word, describe. Now, describe, is, it's it's quite an easy word. We use it all the time, unlike the other words. We, we don't necessarily use them very often, but describe is something that we use all the time. Someone might ask me to go and get something for them, and I'll say, oh, describe, what does it look like? Describe it to me. And they'll say, oh, it's round, it's big, it's yellow, it's green. That is a description right they don't tell me what it does they tell me what it looks like and that is exactly the same with how you should answer an exam question i find this word to be a huge issue when it comes to describing uh, graphs particularly in biology a level and, and gcsc as well where you're asked to describe the graph and what, what you usually get is a big chunk of information about something and then you have a graph and then the first question says describe the graph and it might be a two marker or, or a three marker now what i found is students will go into depth into the topic and explaining why and assessing it and just going into all of this information when it is purely asked you to describe the graph say this graph was to show blood pressure um, and how blood pressure changes uh, as people age, for example. So you could just start off by saying, right, this graph shows blood pressure, the relationship between blood pressure and age. And then the next thing could be as age increases, blood pressure also increases, for example, if that's what your graph shows. So the correlation is a positive correlation. Talk about correlation as well. So right now we are not explaining anything. We're we're not going into the theory, we are literally just describing what the graph looks like. It, let's say for example there's like a plateau at let's say 60 years old and then it continues to go up, you describe that. So you can say the graph stops, the graph stops going up at 60 years old, it plateaus so it could be at steady state and then it continues to go up after 60. And that is a description, which means if I was to show someone that description, they could potentially copy the same graph without looking at the initial graph. So the next word is explain. And this comes quite nicely, I think, after describe, because usually you'll get a graph, it'll say describe, and then part B will say explain the graph. Now explaining is where you're essentially telling the examiner why the graph is the way it is. Why is it that as your age increases, your blood pressure increases? What is the biology behind it? Um, and this is where your theory comes into play. The question that's asking you to explain is testing your knowledge. It's testing your understanding. Because technically, you could give a described question to a, a five-year-old and ask them what's happening to the graph and they'll tell you the line's going up, right? Which is what describe is. But they wouldn't be able to tell you why that's happening and they wouldn't be able to explain why. And that is hopefully what you should be able to do because of what you've learned. Think about three parts for explain questions. Think about what it is, how it is and why it is so what is kind of a description so what what is it what is it that you've seen you've written that down and then how 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 does that happen how is it that that is happening what, what's going on is there a muscle that's in play is there some sort of um de deterioration of something that's in play and then the why so why does that happen because as we age what happens what is it why is it that blood pressure increases what is it is it a diet is it lack of movement and, and kind of explaining everything to be able to explain that graph. The key key thing with explain questions is coherence. So it's really important to be coherent and to be as clear as possible. And again, one thing that I found with um, students is they like to repeat the question. Um, and actually, I want to add one more thing. With explain questions, you technically also can show diagrams as well. And I mentioned this before in quite a few videos now. Diagrams are literally your crutch if you are someone who struggles with um, regurgitating written information. You can draw a diagram to support your answer. So don't feel like if you are struggling to explain that you can't just draw a diagram um, to support what you're, you're writing. As long as it's well labeled and it's 
it, it's, it's clear and it's obviously correct, then you can gain marks from that as well. The next word that I wanted to explain, <laughs> explain, <laughs> is illustrate. Now sometimes you might not see the word illustrate, but you might see using the table above or using the graph above. Um, so and, and then the rest of the question goes ahead. So this word illustrate means to use evidence. When you're illustrating, you are showing and you're showing usually using figures, using diagrams, using tables. Um, that's how you illustrate. It's a word that's quite similar to explain, I would say, um, except this question would require an answer that has got specific numbers and specific figures attached to it. The examiner would expect specific figures to be used from the table that they've mentioned. So what you'd usually get is something like a graph or a table, and then part A would say describe the table or the graph and then part B might say explain and then part C might be to illustrate or it might say using the table above or using the graph above illustrate why so and so. The key thing with answering this question is that you are using actual figures. You could say at 20 years old blood pressure was this much whereas at 50 years old the blood pressure was this much. For this type of question it is not enough to just say it increases. And the last word is to compare. You do need to make sure that you discuss the similarities and the differences of both items. So if you're comparing two characters, then you need to make sure that you've discussed what the similarities are. So how are they, how are they the same? But then also, how are, they, how are they different? And a comparison should not just be skewed towards one character or one um, item that you're discussing. You do need to discuss both of them. This is technically a different word, but contrast is contrast is another word that could be used with compare. So you, you might see compare and contrast. So compare typically um, focuses more on the similarities than the differences, but you should also mention differences. Whereas contrast means to focus more on the differences. So how, the word contrast means how are they different, whereas the words compare means how more how are they similar. When you see a question that says compare and contrast, it kind of means how are they similar and how are they different. So I really hope this explanation of the words helped to clarify um, what they mean and how you'd answer the questions. Because really, if you're asked to describe and you're explaining, zero marks. The words are not there just to be there. They're there because they are asking you, they are giving you a direction. They're telling you what to do. So when you read that question and it says to describe the graph, if you are explaining the graph, you've lost the marks. Be careful with the terminology that's in an exam paper and make sure that you are reading the question twice before you attempt to actually answer it so you know exactly what you've been asked to do. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed and learned something from this video. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.